Judges chapter 8. And the men of Ephraim, that's of Joseph, said unto him, Why hast thou served us thus, that thou callest us not, when thou wentest to fight with the Midianites? And they did chide with him sharply. He said unto him, What have I done now in comparison, first time that word shows up, of you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Ebezer? Now, you don't see it unless you study, but there's sarcasm there. Now, what's happened is, back to chapter 7, um, Gideon's in a war with the Midianites. Now, I'm looking for the place. And he calls Nephtali, he calls other of his brethren into this war to fight. And there's victory. In verse 22 of chapter 7. And the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the hosts. And the hosts fled to Beth Shith and Zerath, and to the border of Abel Manila, Manila unto Tebeth. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Nephtali and out of Asher and out of Manasseh, and pursued after the Midianites. And Gideon sent messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim. There's the Ephraimites. He does call them saying, Come now, come down against the Midianites, and take before them the waters of Beth Bara and Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters unto Beth Bara and, and Jordan. And they took the two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, this is the children of Ephraim, and slew Oreb in, upon the rock Oreb, and Zeb they slew at the running press of Zeb, and pursued Midian, and brought the heads of Orb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side of Jordan. And then they come up to him and said, well, why didn't you call us? Well, he did. He called them kind of like really after the battle. They won the main battle. So when you see here, in verse 2 of chapter 8, it's not the gleanings of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Ebezer. The gleanings of the grape would be Orb. And Zia, what we just read. They conquered these two kings. Now, what is the vintage of Abzizer? Let's take our Bibles to chapter 611. Chapter 6, verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord that sat under an oak which was in Orpha. That pertains to Joash the Abazirnite. So when we come back over to chapter 8, verse 2, Abazir, that's Gideon and his family. Gideon is charged with the main war with his 300 men. And they conquered Midian, except for two kings and a few that remained. Ephraim came in and mopped up. And they're like, well, why didn't you call us for the main battle? Well, if you remember, over here, God said in chapter 7, there's too many men here. Ask those that are afraid. 22 went home. 10,000 remain. Bring them to the water. And those that drink like this, 300. The reason why Gideon didn't call Ephraim, because God told him, you're going to do it by 300 men. When the battle's near over, then he calls uh, Nephtali, Asher, Manasseh, and Ephraim. Help us mop up. So the sarcasm in verse 2 is, well, you know, you got these few men, you know, whereas what about us with 300 got all the men? You guys came after the fact. And it's not the first time Gideon's going to get trouble. He's already had trouble from his home folk for tearing down the altar of Baal. And he said unto them, What have I done now in comparison of you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim, a couple people that you killed, better than the vintage of, look, look at all we done. Which is true statement, but sarcasm. God has delivered into your hands the princes of Median, Oreb and Zeb. 
the grapes. And what was I able to do in comparison of you? <laughs> Look at the sarcasm. You killed two princes. We took on a whole nation. Then their anger was abated toward him when he had said that. <laughs> you know, you guys did a few, but we, we mopped it up. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him faint, yet pursuing them. They're tired, they're sleepy, they're hungry, thirsty. And he said unto the men of Sekov, Give, I pray you, loaves of bread unto the people that follow me, his troops, for they be faint. I am pursuing after Ziba and Zalimum, the kings of Midian. So there's still kings left. Orb and Zeb, they're just princes. And the battle's not done. And Ephraim comes up, why didn't you call us? Well, Ephraim's not following anymore. It's Gideon in his 300, 301. <laughs> and the princess Soko said, are the hands of Zeba and Zalamua now in thy hand? Have you got them now? Sarkov, it means booths. This is the settling place of Jacob in Genesis 33, 17. And this is a reminder when in the law, when the children of Israel were to dwell in booths, the Feast of Tabernacle, this was to be what Jacob did. They lived in booths. That we should give bread unto thy army. And Gideon said, therefore, when the Lord has delivered Ziba and Zalumim, into my hand. See, now he's got confidence in the Lord. It's no more fear. Then I will tear your flesh with thorns of the wilderness and with briars. That's the first time briars shows up. Now those tear your flesh will be explained in a few verses. So they didn't get no food from, from Sokol. And he went up thence to Penuel. This is where Jacob wrestles with the angel of the Lord. Genesis 32, 24. Hosea 12, 4. So where Jacob dwells in booths and where Jacob wrestles are the two places that we see here. And the men of Penu answered him as the men of Sokov had answered. Where, you guys, if you got these guys in your control yet, have you conquered them? We're not going to feed you. And he spake also unto the men of Penu, saying, When I come again in peace, I'm going to get victory. I'll break down this tower. Now Zeba and Zeluma were in Karka, Karkor, and their hosts with them, about 15,000 men. So there's two men left over. There's the two kings. All that were left of all the hosts of the children of the east. For there fell 120,000 men that drew sword. And that was chapter 7. And Gideon went up by the way of them that dwell in tents on the east of Noth and Zagbilha and smote the host, for the host was secure. And when Ziba and Zaluma fled, he pursued after them and took the two kings of Midian, Ziba and Zaluma, and discomforted all the hosts. So here's victory of the Midianites. And the Gideon, the son of Joaz, returned from battle before the sun was up. It's the middle of the night, coming on morning, sunrise, pitches the second advent of Jesus Christ. And caught a young man of the men of Sokol, and inquired of him. And he described unto him the princess of Sokol, and the elders thereof, even three score and seventeen men. So tell me, what do these men look like? Who are the elders of this city? Describe them for me. And he came unto the men of Sokolov and said, Behold, Ziba and Zaluma, with whom ye did upbraid me, ye didn't, didn't feed us, ye scolded me out, saying, Are the hands of Ziba and Zaluma now in thy hand, that we should give bread unto thy men that are weary? And he took the elders of the city, and thorns of the wilderness, and briars, and with them he taught the men of Sokolov. Man, he gave them a whipping. That's what it means. He beat their butt 
with thorns and briars. Ouch. Tear your flesh. Verse 7. He corrected them for doing wrong. We are in the land of Israel. We're in the, the body of, of the Israelites, and they wouldn't even help their own. Going after an enemy. So he teaches them a lesson. God was with Gideon. They were going against Gideon. And he beat down the tower of Panuel and slew the men of the city. They're in rebellion. And said, and said, then said he unto Zebul and Zebul, there's still a lot. What manner of men were they whom he slew at Tabor? All right. These two kings killed some people in Tabor. And they answered, as thou art, Jewish. So were they, Jewish. Each one resembled the children of a king. They looked like a king. And he said, Gideon, they were my brethren. His Now, I, uh, the sons of my mother, not only were they Jewish, they were Gideon's brothers of his mother. This king, Zilba and Zilman, killed Gideon's family. As the Lord liveth, if he had saved them alive, I would not slay you slay you. Now, if my brothers would be still living, I'd let you go, but since you killed my family, and he said unto Jether, his firstborn, his Gideon's son, up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword, for he feared because he was yet a youth. This is so young. And he disobeys his father. As these cities have disobeyed him. If there's one thing that Jether should have got by what Gideon just done, you better obey your military leader. You better obey your father. And he doesn't. Then Ziba and Zalum said, Rise thou and fall upon us, talking to Gideon. For as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon rose and slew Ziba and Zalum. And took away the ornaments that were on their camels' necks, and that has great reference to Ishmael. But here they're Midianites. So Ziba and Zilla, I don't know, they said, hey, why don't you just do it, buddy? Okay, and they done it. You said it, I done it. I wonder what happened if they didn't open their mouth if we had plead to his son to do it. But And this is what you call the law of the cities of refuge, a revenger of blood. Gideon's a revenger of blood. They killed his brothers. They had no right to kill his brothers. So he would have the right to kill them. Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son, grandchildren also, it looks like he's got one son. For thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. So Israel recognizes what, Midian, what Gideon has done. We are now under rest again. God has given us a victory. And Gideon said unto him, I shall not rule over you. Neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. God's in control, not me. You better put God back on that throne. And they'll make this error again under Samuel when they'll get Saul. And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you, that you would give me every man, every man, the earrings of his prey, people you conquered. For they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. Ishmaelites has the golden earrings. They got the earrings, the men that have earrings in their ears. And so do Americans. So do American males have earrings in their ears. And they answer, we will willingly give them. And they spread a garment, a towel, blanket, something, a sheet, 
and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey, the spoil, and the weight of the gold golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold. Besides the ornaments and collars, that's the first and last time that word shows up, and purple raiment that was on the king's Amidian royalty. Purple was a dye that was expensive. It was a rare dye. Purple and red would be very expensive clothing and dyes to get. And besides the chains that were about their camel's necks. And Gideon made an ephod thereof. Now, ephod is an old fashioned t shirt. It's a t-shirt with the sleeves cut off and put it in his city, even in Ophrah. And all Israel went thither a whoring after. They went a whoring after this ephod, which if you were to put it on a stick, it would look like a flag. That's what an ephod looks like you put it on a stick. Which thing became a snare, a trap, a burden unto Gideon and to his house. Oh, we're come to see your your uh, ephod. We want to worship your ephod. He should have got rid of it and burnt it. Thus was Midian said do before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more. Right. And the country was in quiet forty years in the days of Gideon. Forty years rest. And to prepare for the next chapter, and Jubabel, which is Gideon, the son of Joaz, went out and dwelt in his own house. And Gideon had three score and ten sons, that would be seventy, of his body begotten, for he had many wives. For all of his wives he had seventy sons. His concubine, he even had concubines, that was in Shechem. She also bare him a son, whose name he called Abimelech. Abimelech, and that means father of a king, of all names. And this one here is going to give us trouble in the next chapters, Abimelech. Next chapter will be about Abimelech, the son of a concubine of Gideon. And Gideon, the son of Joaz, died in a good old age and was buried in the sepulchre of Joash his father in Ophrah of Abazidites. And it came to pass as soon as Gideon was dead that the children of Israel turned again and went a whoring after Balaam. So in verse 27 when they went a whoring after the ephod it's the same thing going a whoring after Baal. They treated that ephod as a religious symbol. Maybe they pledged allegiance to it or something. Maybe they sang songs to it. Make sure they stand up and put your hand over your heart or something like that. I don't know. Turned away and went a-whoring after Baal. There are more rules and regulations against the American flag than there is a Bible. You can throw a Bible in a garbage can in America, but you can't throw your American flag in a garbage can. You can burn a Bible, but you, you get upset when you burn an American flag. That's just throwing that out there. And you gotta, you know, the American flag can't be in pitch dark. It's gotta be taken down or have lights on it. And yet the Bible sit on a bookshelf in a darkened area in a house somewhere, not even open, not even read. I'm just saying, you don't like it? That's tough. You face God. I believe I'm saying it's right. Then the children of Israel turned again and went a whoring after Baal. That's Baal multiplied. And made Baal Burrow, more name given, their God. Small g. And the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God. They forgot God. Who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies. From Egypt to what we're now reading. All their enemies on every side. So it's not only in Egypt, the enemies that are in the land. Neither show their kindness to the house of Jeroboam, Jeroboam, namely Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had showed unto Israel. And they didn't care about his family. They didn't take care of his family. They just went about their wicked ways. All had sinned. 
all comes short of the glory of God. Man goes up and down, up and down, up. You go straight line, you're dead. And that's what the book of Judges is about. They serve God, they don't serve God. They serve God, they don't serve God. 